Hi there again YouTube, AC Dodds, and this time we're going to be looking at uh, some operations on the milling machine and uh, this particular one is valve seat cutting. The head we've got today uh, is a job for a customer who's just bought this in. He's put some new guides in it. My task was to uh, bring the guides out and then uh, recut the seats. And as you can see, if you look at that uh, exhaust seat there, that's in quite poor condition. So uh, this is a, uh, a 940 head um, for a large bore mini, so a 1275 engine rather than the smaller ones. Uh, and this particular head uh, is, is fitted with the uh, 35.7 intakes and 29.4 exhaust. It's completely standard, uh, so it's just in for a refresh effectively. Uh, the customer doesn't want um, uh, unleaded inserts fitted in this particular casting. Um, I think it's going to be a low use application, so it doesn't really matter in this particular case. But as you can see, it's already suffered with some some recession due to uh, being used on unloaded fuel. So uh, this will need uh, an additive. Anyway, that's not my issue. My issue is to cut some valve seats. So uh, the customers also asked that I uh, I machine these seats and I try and put some, uh, uh, you know, uh, a three angle seat on there just to improve flow slightly. But uh, not to do any porting or blending, but just a basic valve job. So... Uh, Without further ado, let's get it on the machine and get it set up. Okay, so I've got the head uh, bolted down to the Miller machine. Uh, nice and simple, just a straightforward clamp at each end. Uh, some three-quarter cold rolled stock at each end. Uh, the only care that I take here is to make sure that the uh, valve seat cutting pilot, um, when, when I push that into the uh, guide, that it comes all the way through and goes into the gap in the table underneath and it does that as you can see that goes at both ends and that means that uh, when I use the guide uh, it can go down all the way through in every hole uh, and be unconstrained so it's not going to bottom out before it tightens up uh, these guides or these pilots sorry are actually uh, uh, made by Newen as I say and they fit in by a push fit they're a taper fit on the uh, smaller end there so this particular one is an undersized one so it goes all the way down but I use it for the purposes of um, aligning with my machine anyway the next job is to actually uh, find out where the uh, centers are to line up with the spindle uh, I need to clock that in on all eight guides so I know where we are one of the first things you need to do is to set the machine up and to uh, centre up on all the guides. So the way I do that, I'll just use a straightforward clock on the end of the pilot. Um, as you can see there, if I turn that round, that stays on zero all the way around. So we uh, then save that position into the DRO. And we repeat that for all, all of the positions. That way I can come back and repeat and go back to any hole and I know the centres of it so it's nice and quick. Okay, so let's go down and centre up the guides. So number one's already done. Number two.
might seem like a slow system, but actually, once you get your dial gauge, it repeats. So you actually only need to do two points. So you can quickly go down your valves. On number four already. and repeat as required. Sweet. Well, that's done already. One of the next things I need to do is to go down and check the um, relative uh, valve seat height. These cylinder heads are known for being quite different from the factory in terms of their machine heights. So, yeah, okay. That one's 315. And this end one. Okay. We have Thirty-seven. So because we set this up in the milling machine, it gives us nice, nice, precise um, control on the depth. The only problem is uh, if we cut them all to the same depth, unfortunately they won't look right, or the valve seats won't be right in the in the chambers because the relative chamber heights are all different. So when you're doing a head like this, which is a basic valve seat job. What you need to do is cut it in relation to the original valve seat so all the valve seats appear to be the same even though the heights will all be different and that's because these heads were so poorly machined from the factory in this case i've got a valve platform height of 327 thou uh, this one is 325 so they're nice and close uh, this one is 315 so this is much higher uh, and this one is 337 so it's much much lower Okay, the valve seat cutting system I use, uh, which converts my milling machine uh, into a uh, basically my head centre, uh, is the Newen uh, 3DS system uh, available from the States. Uh, I purchased this a couple of years ago, and uh, basically, you get a, a cutter head, uh, a driver, uh, and a um, uh, various pilots which you buy for various size guides. Obviously, I just purchased the ones for doing mini cylinder heads because that's all I, I focus on. Um, and I also, uh, I, I update, you know, I uh, upgraded the kit, so I, I got an extra cutter. And uh, as you can see, I've got lots of inserts there for cutting different valve seats. You buy various, um, you buy various uh, size cutters for doing uh, various size um, valve seats. There are many available, um, but I, I, I pick on uh, just a couple. Uh, the ones we're going to cut here today are 1.7 uh, intake and 1.8 exhaust. Uh, that should give us just enough uh, to make the uh, three angles that we need. Anyway, this kit, is, I've had it for ooh, 
probably a couple of years now and it's proved to be an excellent purchase it is expensive uh, but it produces excellent results and i'm very happy with it okay next thing we need to do is uh, we need to uh, set up the cutters uh, to cut the actual valves so uh, here here i've got a uh, standard 35.7 millimeter intake and a 29.4 so let's set the cutters up to cut these seats in order to do, to do that, uh, Newham produced this little tool which comes in the uh, valve seat cutting kit. You just simply uh, place your valve into the jig. And then screw it into a position and then you set it up. And then you move the pointer in or out of, uh, I'm not going to do it now because I've already set it and then you set the little pointer so it's on the outside uh, diameter of your valve seat which is what I've already done next you take a valve guide pilot which I have here place it in the same jig Take your cutter that you're going to use and then you set your pointer so it aligns with the outside edge and at the moment you can see that that's not the outside edge. I'll just show you that nice and close. You can see that where the pointer touches it's not quite on the outside edge so I've got to bring that cutter out a little bit. To do that insert an allen key in there and you just wind the screw in a little and then we can put the jig back in and we can as you can see i can wind that out in out to adjust that position that looks to be spot on I don't know if you can see that there, but that's just right where I want it. Okay, so that's the cutter. Um, and as you can see, it's got the multiple angles on there. So it's got the uh, 45 degree cut right in the middle, which is there. It's got the uh, bottom cut there and it's got the top cut there. So on this one, it's 30, 45 and 60. And for the exhaust, it's exactly the same. We fit in the exhaust valve. We move over the pointer and we set up the pointer so it's right on the edge of the valve. Okay, so I've set up that one in the same way. Uh, so smaller valve uh, set up with the uh, just turning it so you can get the light on it. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, there we go. Get that pointer pointing. Just at the top of the valve seat. Lovely. So, the benefit of having two cutters is you can set them up and then you're free to do the job with no adjustments. Much quicker. Okay, with the machine set up over the first hole, I can then cut it and then set the depth. machine the first hole then we can move on to the next ones
that's the exhaust done. Give it a quick clean up and have a look. Okay, so let's have a look at the job. As you can see, that's made a relatively good job of a very, very poor seat. Now they are a little bit sunken, uh, but unfortunately you can't help that. If there's so much wear, that's the minimum amount it's taken um, to actually get a full seat. So, and also you'll notice there isn't three angles and there's a reason for that. And that's because the inside bore, um, the inside diameter of that valve throat is actually uh, too big to have them with that valve size. So in order to get uh, a three angle seat on that, you'd actually have to have a uh, bigger bigger valve or actually put an insert in it with a slightly smaller throat okay uh, same operation but now with the inlet valves Okay, seat cutting's complete. You can see the three angles on the intakes all done. And you can also see they're quite large and that's because again, you've had to take a fair bit off uh, to get that nice and concentric. Uh, because this is a budget head, um, the uh, customer doesn't want the chambers blended or anything. So it just wants a full seat and left like that. So uh, I shall leave that in this, uh, in this state. I shall just check to make sure they're all concentric, which they usually are perfect. But I'll, I'll uh, show you that for the purposes of the video. Okay, I've uh, just put some blue on the uh, uh, valves and uh, tried them in the seats. And we've got contact in all positions. So uh, very happy about that. Okay, that was a little video on uh, just about cutting some valve seats on the Miller machine. Uh, nice basic uh, valve seat job there. Uh, no frills. Uh, not a performance application. So... Uh, they, the customer just wanted the engine to run. So anyway, hopefully you uh, you got something useful out of that. And as ever, if you uh, want to see some more videos, please like and subscribe. See you soon.